Okay. Do I have the agenda up? Are you able to see the agenda for? I actually have it on my phone, so yes, okay. I can. Yes. Yep. So we'll go ahead and we'll start. Uh, we'll call to order the meeting for uh, the Youth Adult Council, uh, the May meeting. Uh, roll call, there won't be a necessary. We'll just note the people on the call and we'll make sure we include that in the agenda. Uh, do we want to go ahead and uh, make a motion to begin this month's meeting? So moved. <laughs> I'll take that as a motion to, to start the meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Don, I'm assuming you're, you're an aye on that one too. Aye. Uh, yes. All right. So the motion is passed. We can go ahead and begin the meeting. Um, do you have the, Angelica, do you have the meeting notes up for um, April um, 2021? Yes, I'm going to stop this year and then open up the minutes. Okay. So again, I welcome, I welcome everybody to the meeting. If you want to go ahead and look at either two things, you can either look at the uh, meeting notes that she forwarded to us uh, via email, or you can look at the screen. Angelica, just feel free to kind of scroll through uh, at your leisure on that side. I think you can scroll to the next uh, little bit there. All right, well, everybody just kind of finishes up reviewing the meeting notes. Uh, is there anyone that would like to make a motion to approve the April 2021 uh, meeting notes? I, Hector, I just do have one question. I can do either, either ask it here or ask it later, but on the senior graduation, just did we know. didn't we discuss or did we also discuss any other Bloomfield graduates aside from those at the high school and the gym? I believe we did. Okay. There was some follow up with that one, Roger, if I recall. Um, okay. And now that we have Mrs. Jones on the call, we can ask her about it as well. But uh, there may be some changes to that based on um, based on some stuff today. So I, I noticed it's on the agenda today. Yeah, I just so, I could have raised it here or raised it in the agenda, but I thought I thought we did talk about it, but I wasn't positive. Um, uh, Angelica, unless there's been anything earth shattering, I'm assuming there's been some major changes since the last meeting with respect to graduation. But um, if I'm yeah. wrong, you let me know. Oh yeah, there are some changes. It's not going to be like it was last year with the drive-through. If you okay, have a, a plan for in-person, so I can go over and more details, the information that I know of for the Bloomfield High School graduation for this year. I'm gonna stop you there, uh, just because, you know, as it pertains to the meeting notes, I think maybe we just, like you said, we kind of leave it out, Roger, and we kind of talk about it a little bit on this call. Okay, um, that's fine. And then we'll go from there, because I believe we talked about money associated with that as well. Yep. So, thanks for bringing that up, Roger. Okay, I'll move approval of the minutes then. Uh, anyone second? A second, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And the ayes have it. So the meeting notes are approved. We can move on to the next piece. So old business. Um, Angelica, do you want to start talking about the uh, youth services updates? Yes, I want to just pull up our 
view services spreadsheets so you can kind of have a flow to go through as I go through the list. I'm just pulling it up and um so we're just going to do an overview of our youth services programs that we have here. I'm just going to scroll up to the top. So this is for the month of April, all the events that we did. I'm just gonna have um, Tiffany start with just overview of JRV and they will break down the rest of the youth services updates for the program that we have. So JRV has been flowing well. Um, we've been having a nice steady pace of cases coming in and out. Um, mostly things having to do with outside of school. Um, Currently, we did just get in two new cases um, with intakes coming up soon. Um, we had mentor sessions start for one individual, and I'm in the process of referring another for counseling, individual counseling. Um, there's no family services cases at this time. For our foster care support network, we are continuing to do a combination of in-person and virtual activities. We had our family event this, this month at the end of the month, it was a tie-dye event, and we had a good turnout for that event as well. We just really try to get creative with the types of activities that we provide for the families to do virtually and in-person as well. And Tiffany, I want to just have you do the two, the main highlights for your, the police group and the Sundays. Sure, for police and youth group, that group has been going very great. Um, they had a nice session called the Table Talk event, which we invited the parents to join. Um, and they had a nice discussion about how, oh, sorry, <laughs> just drew a blank. So they, yes, yeah, they had a nice discussion about how um, the community and the police department um, can merge in union and had great topics about even things going on um, in the news and in other states and towns. And they were able to keep a nice focus so that way it didn't feel negative at all. Um, and just looking at the positives and being able to highlight what great relationship Bloomfield has with our youth and our own community um, so that there's no tension there. Um, but the parents, I got a lot of great feedback from the parents and the kids were into the discussion. Um, so it went very well. Last week, they did a tour of the police department um, and they're there again tonight um, doing some more hands-on activities. And for the Sunbeam Girls group, um, that group is going well as well. Um, this month, they focused a lot about mental health um, within youth, they talked about anxiety, depression, ways to see the signs in your body. Um, they even touched on, we had a topic about my body is changing and am I ready? Um, and that was just focusing on them, learning how to love and respect themselves and knowing their worth, um, especially with all the temptations and peer pressure that goes around within the young people, um, just how to protect themselves. Project 330 is our leadership group. For this group, we have them focus on a lot on team building. And we also have, um, for the month of April, we had a presentation, a pre-recorded presentation from Dynamic Influence, which talks about the um, dangers of vaping and is, gives a historical background around how vaping started and how to protect yourself and make smarter decisions. And this is a combination that we had a lot of our other youth services uh, programs participate in this online recorded session as well. And we actually did another big planning. We are having um, an event next week for uh, the kickball with the youth. 
and we actually have them focusing on a social issue of child hunger. So they will be participating in uh, raising non-perishable items for our, our local food bank and explain to the youth about the importance of our food bank here in town and how many families utilize the program and how often and the beauty is we have it in our own building. So they got to see which items that we were in need of. So we put together a list that they're gonna to work together as a team to get um, donations within themselves internally to pro provide for our food bank as well. And the kids really got excited about it once they saw the food bank and how it's, you know, it can be full and at times and empty at times and how this is a really need in our town as well. Our tribe is our young mentor, young mentor leadership group. They had their last session they did a final overview of all the things they talked about within the mentoring topics throughout the entire session. CAMS is our after school program. This program is 100% virtual. So we've been, have, we've been getting real creative in terms of the types of activities that we lead. We have a presenter from UM Merge that does our leadership activities on Wednesday. So she guides the kids in discussion about how to be a leader and self-esteem and building that up within themselves. And we also did the vegan presentation with this group as well. And we try to do every Friday, a different fun interactive activity that they can participate in to make it fun. So it's not all, all the time serious learning. Cause I know for this program, Monday, Tuesday, they focus on our uh, academic portion with the middle school. And Wednesday through Friday, we incorporate more fun activities and team building activities for, for this session. For it to be all virtual, We've had a good turnout. We have about 15 kids enrolled and we get a, at least half of those kids consistently logging in. So having them logging in is half the battle. Something new that we started for the first time, we've been trying to get this up off the ground is a parent, parent series. Last month, we had a whole month dedicated towards the April parent wellness series. And we had a lot of great feedback from the families We had a consistent consistent family members to show up for this virtual session. This was led by a clinician from, put a blank on her name, from Emerge Behavioral Health. Latoya I, Watson. Latoya Watson. And she did a really good job in terms of going over the different topics. It talked about working on fitness, how to balance the two pandemics and a lot of these parents, they opened up and shared their struggles and concerns. And a lot of them want that one of the sessions to continue. So we're trying to strategize ways that we can incorporate more parent series throughout the school year for, for these parents to have. But overall, it was a really good um, turnout. And I do look forward to using this presenter as well for future topics. And this is also something that was new and never done. So to have parents participate and show up that is such a huge thing for the department and the community as well. For admin, it's the admin section is just different meetings that we, myself and Tiffany has attended throughout the month of April. And some of those meetings consisted of the portrait of a graduate and our RAC meetings. And there's also, it was a conference on foster care and adoption that had different strategies with two day virtual conference. <clears throat> so myself and staff were also Part of this meeting as well to get new tips that we can add into and incorporate with our foster care program as well. Did anybody have any questions or need more information on any of our youth services program activities for the month of April? I was just wondering for the benefit of the mayor and Councilman Kirk, and, uh, approximately how many young people do you believe we serve? Overall, for all of these programs in total? Yeah. Um, let's see. I can kind of give you a quick rough estimate. Let me just go through. Say about 60, around 60. Okay. About 60. And we have been having smaller group sizes, our maximum are about seven to 10 based on our program size that we have for all of our groups to be in compliance with COVID regulations and social distancing. Thank you. Angelica and, and, and Tiffany, I'm going to ask John to kind of jump in on this one too, because I have questions about the JRB again. Mm -hmm. um, so let me let me ask John first. Are we do we have physically 
anyone back in the schools knowing that schools are back, I guess, in session? Well, let me not say in session, because that, that makes it seem like we weren't doing anything before. <laughs> um, what I would say in-person learning, right? Do we have any offices in the I don't know if you cut out, but we have we have officers that will um, sometimes go through the school or walk through the property or you know, park them doing their paperwork in the parking lot so that there's a presence. We don't have anybody assigned to the schools currently. Um, okay. All a right. Couple of, um, I guess obstacles we have right now. Um, right. We're about seven officers short, and what they wind up doing is having to strip from some of the support service service functions so that the road is covered. Um, mm -hmm. we've hired four or five already. Um, and I believe that we're looking to fill seven academy seats over the next six or seven months. Um, when that winds up, um, when that winds up, uh, I guess, concluding their training, um, then we'll wind up being at, having the ability to staff those positions if that's what we're going to do in the future. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so going back to the JRB piece of it, how many referrals are we getting from the school versus um, like an officer or from the police? Like how's the breakout? Is it 50-50? Is it, you know, um, for school or? For the school has just been occasionally. Um, Cause as you know, school was not meeting in person. So the couple we did get from the school were more in regards to truancy. Um, but now that they're back in person, I'm not sure if that may change. But for right now, we've mostly been getting cases from either the PD or the juvenile court. Gotcha. And they are, are they domestic or, you know, is it like? Uh, More fighting um, or stealing. Gotcha. They're usually the main two. Okay. All right, thank you. That was my question about the JRB. Um, with respect to the parent group and Angelica, I continue to say this, every single meeting, I think it is crucial that we get that network group or that, that networking group going. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's going well. Um, ideally, I'd like it to grow organically, meaning you guys kind of start the process and then eventually it becomes its own, like it kind of, it handles itself, right? And you guys are just facilitators, uh, taking ideas from that group and then developing programs or parent programs uh, based on that feedback. So love everything that we're doing right now. I like how it's kind of moving in that direction, um, hoping that we can kind of continue to, uh, a continued focus on that in addition to the other things that we all do, right, um, in the future years. So thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone have any other questions in regards to programming for youth services before we move on to the next agenda item? All right, so I'm going to take silence to me. We can move on to the next subject, which is uh, youth, uh, the summer youth employment. For summer youth employment, the application, the original deadline was scheduled for May 1st. We received the notification that the deadline for the pre-application pre is May 14th. The application is through the Capital Workforce Partners website. For our town, we are accepting 14 and 15 year olds for the learning enrichment piece of the program and 16 and 17 year olds will be participating in the actual hands-on work site placements where they be placed in different um, departments. Right now, we do have a few town departments that will be participating and taking on a few of those students. And we are still in the process of working on additional work sites to fulfill all of those slots. We did receive a letter stating that we have a contingent 22 slots so the way it'll be broken down, 11 slots will be for the 14 and 15 year olds. And for the 16 and 17 year olds, we have 11 slots for those students. We don't have access for, to the applications until after the deadline closes is May 14th. Um, last time I checked, we had um, over 70 youth that have applied for the program. And I'm quite sure that was about last week I asked to at least get the numbers. So I'm quite sure we'll get a lot more between now in the closing of the application on the 14th. We do have a kickoff meeting for this Friday where they're gonna give us more guidance in terms of capital workforce, in terms of how the program's gonna work. 
Last year, we had a couple of different components. We had the work site component and the hands-on learning piece for the students in person. And it also included 10 hours of job readiness skills virtually. And then there was a mental health component for a one hour a week. So I'll learn more about how they want us to break down the requirements for this year. I know the last conversation, they wanted to keep the mental health piece including because that was so important for the youth with everything going on. Last year, they used the village. They had an instructor that came on every week to the call with our group in Bloomfield and did a guided discussion around different mental health topics as well. Um, last year, we used a different system called a career edge, where it had a lot of the different work platforms in terms of applications, cover letter, interviewing tips. We used that online platform that was provided through Capital Workforce. So as I know more information at the next meeting, I'll have more to share about how the layout will look for, for this summer. It is a six week position. Six week position, they do 120 hours for the duration of the program with the anticipation start date July 1. Um, it's advertised from Capital Workforce through, I think, the end of August, but well, we end earlier because the kids go back to school towards the end of August. So, Angelica, question about that then. Um, one of the things that we kind of talked about at the last meeting was the possibility of, of getting maybe the Chamber of Commerce to get some of their, their members to participate in the program. Are we still working out those details or is that not something that's going to happen for this year? Um, we are still working out those details. Um, we are in the process of working through our insurance liability and seeing um, which sites we'll be able to have as off, off sites that aren't town departments to have that happen. Um, we will keep it small because this is our first year having, you know, having ability to do outside sites. So um, we're still doing more um, connected in terms of how that piece will look for outside um, town work sites. Did we have a lot of people or a lot of uh, businesses like reach back out and say that they would be interested in participating? Um, or? I, from my last conversation with uh, Camilla, I know we had, it was mentioned in a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and there were some businesses that expressed interest in it. I'm not Excellent. sure um, which ones we were just waiting on our insurance liability before we went to move forward with that process. So we will be connecting to see which business businesses were interested and see to make sure that we'll have, um, it'll be a good fit for the students to get a good learning opportunity for the summer. Beautiful. Even if we don't get participation from, you know, non-town entities this year, I still think laying the groundwork for that is important. And uh, actually having companies or businesses coming to us and saying that they're interested in it, I think it's important too. So that's, that's a nice thing here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Angelica, are we anticipating that this is going to be all in person? Yes. Yep. Good. So we're um, anticipating all in person. We have a small enough group size. Restrictions are being, you know, loosened up within as these months go by. I know May the restrictions are changing. So we do anticipate um, full in person for for everything for um, our learning group and for our work site group as well. Excellent. Any other questions from the group? All right. Uh, we can move on to the Youth Adult Council budget. And Angelica, I think, uh, unless I'm unless I'm hearing things differently, I think maybe the senior graduation and the update to the budget might be go hand in hand. So we may want to cover the two together. Yes, they do. Because I know the last meeting we discussed about using, uh, using the remaining funds from our budget to go towards the senior graduation um, supplies is needed based upon the requests of the schools that we have. I know um, I did get follow up last, last meeting, we discussed about how many anticipated seniors that would be graduating. I did connect with Mr. White at the high school. They're anticipating 120 students to graduate from Bloomfield High School. The last time I connected with Jim's, they had about four to five Bloomfield residents that will be graduating this, this senior year from, from high school. So with that, um, some of the things I'll do the same as last year in terms of the, the kits that had the blankets and it had um, the blankets, the bags, and there was some other items in there, um, some mugs and, and the lanyards that we had from last year. I did put in the order for the blankets because that did take some time to get in because we have so many to order. So I did put that in to, um, to provide for the gyms 
graduation students and the Bloom for High School students. I did, I still, I haven't received any other additional requests. We do have some funds for other grants to use if there's some additional requests that are requested, but um, I haven't received any requests beyond the um, gyms, gyms coordinator for the graduation reach out. And I know the high school, they're doing a couple items as well for the students that they're gonna hand out before graduation. So the plans are what, what's gonna happen is for the graduation, we're gonna to go to the school with our kids to, to deliver the stuff when they do their, um, their pre-graduation, um, pre-graduation, oh my gosh, it's not training, pre-graduation um, that they're gonna do before rehearsal. So um, we're gonna go up there on the 16th to um, hand out our stuff to all of the students that are present for the Rehearsal and then we'll leave. Uh, we'll figure out a way to coordinate if they miss rehearsal to make sure they get their items as well. Last year, what we did was we had them come directly to us to pick up their kits if they weren't there for pick up for everything. Gotcha. So we're still talking about at least the same amount of dollars being spent. We're just it's being done differently, correct? Because they actually they're not doing like a drive through. They're doing in person graduation. So, yes. Yeah, so. So uh -huh. we, that it was presented to me, they're going to do it in person. I'm not too familiar with the courtyard. They're going to, they're going to use the courtyard at the high school, and it's kind of going to be a one way in and one way out. So I'm yeah. not sure how they're breaking down families coming in and what's the, the max group size for that, that area. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm not sure exactly where the courtyard that they're pertaining to um, on the grounds of the high school but they are planning to do an in-person graduation. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar with the high school, the courtyard is actually, um, it's accessible in a couple of different locations, primarily through the library, uh, mm -hmm. but it's actually a nice little space that they have, and it's a good amount of space. Uh, Ms. Jones, correct me if I'm wrong, and you may have, have some details about this that I, don't, that I don't, but I guess I'll share with the group what I know is that they're limiting the number of, of um, Obviously, all the students are going to be located um, and allowed to come. It, I think the number of people you can come with each graduate is four people, um, and they'll be socially distanced, uh, and the graduates themselves will be seated uh, in, I guess, like a patio area where, um, where when you first exit the library, there's like a little patio um, where, you know, they have seating and everything available. I'm sure all that stuff will be cleared out, and the graduates will be there along with um, all the dignitaries, so. That is exactly what I was told. As far as how many people can come per graduate. Going well, back to my other, que my original question though, doesn't the Board of Education have a list of Bloomfield students who are attending other schools like Creck schools who would also be graduating? I would think they would have to be registered here in order to be attending you know, schools like the magnet schools, et cetera. So this is where we need your help, Mrs. Jones. And, and last year when we had this problem, or, or let me not say problem, it was just, we were trying to figure out how many students in Bloomfield uh, were graduating. And that included correct schools, magnet schools, charter, um, you know, those kind of things. We wanted to, do, to be fair and equitable across the board. Everybody got uh, a gift, and I say that in quotations, from social news services. So last year, Dr. Silver was able to give us a number. We're not necessarily looking to, to, to get the names. We just need a number so that we can order the correct stuff. And then um, we can put out the all points uh, to say, hey, there's something for you. Please come to social news services or wherever where you can pick up this item. So um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, she's not here anymore, but Jason might be able to give us that. So if, um, and if Angelica, if you can just email me that and I'll be sure to, to ask him when I meet with him tomorrow. Okay. How, how can we get that? Because she might have, he might have been part of that email chain from last year. And it might be the same contact people that um, she used to, to, get the, to get the data for you for the, for the last year students. Hello? 
I'm here. Okay. Okay. But no, yeah, I'll send out, yeah, I'll send out that email because I can't remember um, the number we had last year that were Bloom for residents that attended other schools in different districts. Okay, so I mean, because because it's really hard to do. Like the correct one is a little bit easier because because like we can call correct and do it that way. It's the students who go to like private schools. That's where it gets kind of tricky because you you don't know which private schools they go to. So you like are are we calling around to all the schools? So it gets kind of tricky. And I can also look on Kichima on my end if there is an email thread that was from Dr. Silver that had a certain breakout. Yep. If I can find that, I can forward that as well as another guide that um, maybe Jason will connect with to get that the information. Thank you. All right, so that's all good stuff about the senior graduation. Um, hopefully next year, things will be a little bit more back to normal and uh, we can figure out how we can support our students and our uh, enrolled, um, either with or without Bloomfield, but as long as they're Bloomfield residents, support them some way, uh, more traditionally like we have in the past. So uh, we'll just kind of continue to be flexible and we'll move forward with uh, our plans for this year, so. Angelica, did you have anything else that you want to talk about the uh, the budget itself? Um, no, that was it. It's just once I get the, the final number, I'll, you know, I'll make sure I have enough accounted for, for all of our senior graduates and I'll get a, a variety of things to put in those kits to provide to the senior, senior graduating class and that will close out the balance remaining for the Youth Adult Council funds for this fiscal year. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, we've talked about new business and uh, the senior graduation. Uh, do we want to talk about the portrait of a graduate? Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if everybody on the call is familiar with the Portrait of a Graduate. It is an initiative that the Bloomfield District is actually starting up to look at different ways that we can highlight skills and assets for the 21st century that the kids will need to have. And then we'll incorporate from early as early pre-K to grade 12. So the idea behind it is that a youth that attends Bloomfield Public Schools, let's say they start with us in pre-K, all the way through grade 12, they will develop all these different assets and skills to help them be competitive in the 21st century. So right now, um, we're in a planning process and there's a select group of committee members that is planning on what that will look like, how we can get different people from the community and different organizations and the school and they're tailoring, will be tailoring their curriculum as well to incorporate those components. So this, for instance, an example of high management, like what would that look like for an early childhood student? What would that look like for a, a student that's in high school? So we, I actually got asked to be a part of this committee for the youth services department. So what I'm doing for the youth services department is once they finally finalize what it would look like in terms of what particular traits and characteristics and different um, things that they want to do for the portion of a graduate, how to include that into youth services programs. So we'll be weaving in these ideas into our existing programs and new programs to make sure we're all in a all in it together to make sure our students are getting the best that they have for programs out of school, after school, in school as well. Um, Angelica, you, you explained that very well, very well. I appreciate you. Um, and we also reached, just to add on to it, um, what we did as a district was we reached out to parents. So each school had a parent uh, Zoom um, and the parents had a chance to pick what they felt were their top 10 or 15 competencies that they think that their students should have once they leave Bloomfield Public Schools. Um, we also met with stakeholders, faith-based partners, staff members, um, Anybody that, that we could meet with, we met with to, so that everybody had a say in this. We even met with the students. Um, and then we are going to compile that list to, to come up with the top 15. Um, and then like Angelica said, we are working with our partners to weave this into the work that they do with our students in Bloomfield. And this um, a presentation was given by Mr. White at the high school to our staff. We had a staff meeting. So our staff as well got a chance to answer the survey questions and give feedback in terms of 
know, areas of improvement and what they felt was important for kids to graduate. So it's good to have our staff being able to be part of that as well too, um, just to get their voice from a youth services perspective and after school lens of what is important for, for students to have when graduating. So it's an exciting project. I'm excited to see how it all will come together and how we can build upon it for our Bloomfield residents and students. Is this going to include the non-public pre-K as well as the uh, public pre-K? Um, I'm not sure if, for the answer for that one. Kishma, do you know if it will include the non-public pre-K as well for this initiative? Um, I'm not sure because the goal was to um, have a timeline on what it, it looks like for a Bloomfield public student that went to the Bloomfield public school system, what that would look like. So I'm not sure that that was included, but I will definitely ask and get back to you. Yeah, because a number of our religious communities do have preschools, including the, the, the uh, congregational church that I attend. Um, so it would be useful to include them, I would think, if, if, we, if we could. They might have already been included because we did reach out to faith-based uh, yeah, I heard you say that. in our community. Yeah. So okay. we did reach out to them and they had their own meet meeting and they were able to answer their, the survey questions as well. Hi, hi, this is Camilla. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, I've been having technical issues all evening trying to connect. So um, I is there a way that perhaps the Youth Adult Council can participate on the survey? I guess that would um, be a I question for Kitsa. Oh, I don't see why not. Okay. So it'd be great to have um, the their their input. Yep. So if you can just send me because I promise you I'm gonna forget. I promise. <laughs> um just just um shoot me the email and and um i and i can share share the link okay perfect and do you do you know if they engaged um uh town council members as well yes okay from my understanding yes that was part of the plan okay that's great I don't know if I can jump in, but yes, they did. And they also made a presentation um, at the last council meeting. Thank you. Is there any other questions in regards to the portrait of a graduate for Bloomfield? All right. When, when do they think that they can actually begin a program like that? Um, they, have a start, they have a target start date. It's not really a program. It's more of a of, of a system. It's more of a strategy that will be implemented in the work that we do within our schools and with our partners. Okay. Do they have a target implementation date? Um, I'm going to say to be determined because I don't want to put a date out there that's okay. that that I'm assuming or that I'm not a or that I'm not a hundred percent sure of. But okay, we're trying to get to, so we're trying to get all the work done and all the research done and, and all the surveys done before school ends. Oh wow. Because we have done a lot of the footwork, like we have done all the presentations to the families and, and everybody that, that I said before. Now it's compiling that so that we can mm -hmm. now push it back out. That's the hard part. Sounds like a fair amount of work. Thank you. No problem. I agree. Um Thank you, everyone, for kind of commenting on that one. Uh, definitely looking forward to more info on that. So uh, youth services staffing updates. Yes, so we have two new hires that will be starting for our youth and family worker positions. They will be starting actually tomorrow afternoon with us. So we have um, two new positions. They are going to be uh, 20 hours. So we have additional staff that we can incorporate into our youth programs and we can and more people to add into our ideas for to grow our team as well. Um, two of those staff, they actually um, are part of the Bloomfield School District as well. So it's good to have that connection with us extending over to the after school programming as well. Okay. 
and they are positioned year round, so they'll be with us year round. Excellent. Um, do we know? This is Camilla again. I'm I'm sorry. I just wanted okay. to clarify. They're not n new positions. They were vacant positions. Um, the staff are new. One staff is um, no longer with us, and the other position had been vacant for about a year or so, and we were able to get permission to finally fill it. Thanks for clarifying on that one. That was actually going to be my next mm -hmm. question, Camilla. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought there was. <laughs> Do we know where we stand with foster care? Do we have a foster care person hired already? Maybe I missed that in the last. Oh meeting. yeah, we've had a foster care support worker since last year. Oh um, wow, there it is. Yeah, okay. She's, yeah, she's been with us since the fall of last year. Um, Excellent. No, since Feb I think since February until. February. Oh yes, yes. Right February, before COVID. Before yeah, right February. before COVID. Ah, uh, maybe mm -hmm. that's what it is then. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, that, uh, and that must be why I missed that one, just because of, you know, of the time it came in. So, mm -hmm. but that's good. That's awesome. It seems like we've always had trouble kind of, Tiffany, exclude you from this conversation. Um, we've always had people, you know, kind of rotate through that fairly quickly, right? There's been a, a fair amount of attrition in that role. So it's nice to hear that we have a, a little bit of longevity with that at this point. So glad to hear. And we're finally fully staffed with youth services. It's been a long yes. time. Since we've been able to say that, yeah. Beautiful. And with the exception of these two uh, new hires, everyone's been with us for over a year. I think the longest that someone's been with us, um, Mr. Mitch, he's been there longer than I've been there. So that's over <laughs> 20 years. So he's but got we some stability finally. There you go. <laughs> we share with him. He gets, uh, he gets a lot of stuff through leisure services too, though, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Any other questions about the youth services staffing updates? Any other comments? All right. Announcements. If no one has any announcements, what I do want to do is I want to call out a, a couple different things. Number one, um, John, if you want to give us any updates on, on, on the police, um, that'd be awesome. And then Mrs. Jones, if you want to give us any updates from, from a school perspective that we haven't already spoken of, by all means, please feel free at this point to, to kind of jump in. Some of the things where uh, Tiffany already spoke about the police and youth groups, um, we're working with uh, the Explorers Boy Scouts to, to try to get that up and running. Um, I already spoke about in last month's meeting that um, it's been challenging to get the kids to um, sign on and really be engaged on these Zoom Explore meetings. It's really more of an interactive thing, but we have that scheduled for this month um, to see how many of these kids we're going to wind up bringing back in. Summer is usually a lull for us, so um, you know, we're going to try to get there for the next few weeks, uh, really push trying to recruit for Explore. So if anybody here has uh, kids they can push in our direction, that we can get them on board so that we have a good group to work with throughout the summertime, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, a lot of our other programming uh, has really been waiting till just about right now, May, we're gonna be able to start opening up some of the activities. Um, so some is to be determined um, as we figure out what our budget looks like and, um, and our staffing. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Jones, anything uh, from the school? Um, nothing that hasn't been said. Um, I think we talked about early start last time. Mm -hmm. That is still happening. There, there have been no changes to that. Um, we're just right now, um, the registration is open. Parents can uh, sign up in PowerSchool or they can call the school and their child teacher can also go on Bible school and, and sign their children up. So there's many ways that children can get, get signed up if parents are saying that they have a, a hard time logging in or anything like that. Um, the high school is also having an early start program. They're having a credit recovery program. Um, Jim's is as well. Jim's I think is virtually um, with maybe like a couple of days in the last week the kids being busted only because those kids live all over. So, so it's a little bit harder in the summertime. 
Gotcha. Okay. Um, and they will all have, well, the K through eight will, will have um, academics in the in the morning time and enrichment in the afternoon because we, we want to make sure that the students are having fun because it is because it's still summertime and they have been in this crazy space for an entire year. So we want to make sure that we incorporate the fun time. Gotcha. Um, right now, that is the only um, um, thing that's, oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Because Angelica spoke about portrait of the graduate and we have early start. I conducted listening tours with families. So we did one at, we did one for Wintonberry, Laurel and Meta Comet. That was one date. And then there was one for Case and Camps. And then there was one for Gems in Bloomfield High School. And what that did was I made I met with the parents. They were able to send me questions prior to. Um, and even if they didn't, whoever logged onto the Zoom, we had a very open conversation. And it was probably like six guiding questions that we really didn't have to use because the parents were just so excited to have a conversation. And they were very open and were sharing their likes, dislikes, things that they would want to change, um, how they want to be communicated with, what um, what they wanted. Like they were just very open and, 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 and transparent. So that is also being used along with the data from the portrait of a graduate to kind of decide um, what programs will be offered next school year to families as well as students and to kind of build our program so that we're giving our families and our students what they're asking for and not what we think that they want. And cool. that's what I have so far. Outstanding, thank you. Sounds good. Absolutely. All right, unless there's any other announcements, anyone else? All right. Public comments. So can, can I go in public comments? <laughs> By all means, please, feel free, Madam Mayor. I just thought this was funny, <laughs> like, it's just us. Okay, so um, public comments. Um, my name is Suzette DeBeatham Brown, and I live at 25 Fairfield Lanes. I've been a member, um, uh, a resident in Bloomfield for her over 25 years. So um, I would just like to inform you guys of some things that are going on. I know that we have our last meeting on June 1st, but some information, um, June 19th, we're gonna have the MLK mural unveiling at the Human Services Building. Um, that's a Saturday. The event starts at 11 a.m. The week after that, starting on the 24th to the 27th, we'll be Celebrate Bloomfield. On the 24th, we'll be having a concert at uh, Rockwell. On the 25th, uh, all the activities will take place at the Human Services Building, activities for the entire family. On the 26th, which is that Saturday, we'll be on the Town Green, a day filled with activities. We'll have a pop-up shop, um, food trucks, uh, DJ Buck will be with us. Uh, Saturday evening will be the Mayor's Celebration Ball. And this year we're celebrating our students, the young man that won the spelling bee, the students that won the STEM program sponsored by Otis Elevator, and the young lady that nominated us for the nicest town during 2020. So I'll be celebrating a lot. On Sunday, we're going to have a bike ride with Octagon Bike Club. We're also going to be picnicking at the uh, Philly Pond. So I just wanted to make sure that you all knew what was going on. So hopefully you can help us to spread the word. Hopefully our residents are getting their vaccines and they just wanna come out, breathe some fresh air and um, socialize again. So that's, that's our hope. And I just wanted to share that with you all. I also would like Mr. Hector to please give me a call, sir, um, when you have a minute. Absolutely. Do you have my number? I do not, but I will. Get, I will connect with you after. I'll figure out a way to to get the. You know, unless eight six zero nine one three six five two four. It's public. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there with you. You caught me off guard. I'm in the car. I'm in the car. Hold on. <laughs> Here come the calls, Madam Mayor. <laughs> it's everybody. Listen, everybody else calls, so it's okay. <laughs> Follow me, please. When you're ready. Eight six zero nine nine one three. Mm -hmm. Six six five two four. Um, I also just wanted to also remind you that the 
Prosser Public Library has a building committee. Um, they are looking to uh, rebuild Prosser Library, rebuild and expand. They're also looking to expand the library on um, the McMahon Wintonberry Branch Library. Um, you can go out to the Bloomfield Public Library's website and find all the information about that project out there. Thank you for giving me time. I quite, I greatly appreciate it. Well, we appreciate the commentary and the statement. Thank you. I do have a, a hand raised from Rickford. Is there something you wanted to add as well? Correct. Um, I can't see everyone for some reason. I think the, the agenda. Um, yes, yeah, because she's screen sharing. Okay. Okay. Got you. No, I just, uh, thank you. I just want to add, I know you're talking about funding and you're talking about ways to, you know, get money for the various programs that you're running. And I know that ARP, the American Rescue um, Plan that was passed and, and the, the, the various towns are going to be receiving funding. I know part of the discussion we were having on the, the council, at a, uh, council level, I know the mayor was talking about this, where we start having those conversations early uh, and with the various stakeholders within the community, because everyone is going to be coming uh, and putting their hands up. And I think it's important uh, for you guys to also to be ahead of the curve and to also try to find ways to outline and figure out exactly what sort of funding you may need uh, for our, our youth within the, the town. I know you mentioned we have 60, but can we, ex what, would it be possible to expand that if you have more funding? I mean, those are all possibilities, but just be aware that that's going on. And it's, as soon as we have more information, we'll provide it to you. Right now, it's basically, it's just a discussion phase. We haven't received anything from the state that will come through from the federal government right down to uh, the state of Connecticut and they're gonna start allocating the funds. And I think right now they're talking within a three year um, time frame of, of sending that money to the various communities. So we wanna make sure that all of these programs that do really well for our young people are also at the table uh, expressing their concerns for funding. So I just wanted to get that out there. Is there any timeline um for when the town is going to start to make those decisions? No, we we don't because we haven't really received any guidance okay. from the state, but I think it's important for you all to start formulating right. and thinking about what would you like to see in the various programs that you're running. Can we put that on the agenda for our next meeting? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So Thank you. Funding for programming. Okay. Excellent. Um, or announcements, and then we're past that. But any other of public comment? Hey, just one more thought on that last point, um, because a number, some of our members aren't here today, and can we just put that out to them so they don't wait? So we highlight that for them rather than just including it in the minutes or in the agenda for next time, so that they can start thinking about it as well. I could send out a separate email before in our next meeting. Great, thank you. Okay. So unless there's any other public comments, we are actually done for today. There's no more agenda items. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to end uh, this month's meeting? Sure, Hector, also move. <laughs> there we go. Anyone second? I'll second. Donna. There you go. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we are all set. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And Madam Mayor, I'll be reaching out to you shortly. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Right. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.